What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to inherit widget properties with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at inheriting widget properties. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time via just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've been moving along in our Kivi playlist here. And in this video, I want to talk about inheriting widget properties, specifically in our Kivi design files. I call it the Kivi design file. It's technically a Kivi language file, but it's for design stuff. So I call it the Kivi design file. And every time we know that we create something in an input box, a label or whatever, we can give it different attributes. We can give it a font size, we can give it colors, we can give it positions, all the things we've been looking at. But you may just wanna give a blanket color to all buttons or all text, or you know you might wanna have all your text a certain size and not have to type it in every time you type in a, a label or a text thing into the KVD design file. So that's what we're gonna look at doing in this video. So. I've got a file called inherit.py and a KV design co file called inherit.kv. And it's the same exact code we've been working on, our same, same starter code. And we're gonna use, I think, the box layout that we used in the last video just to keep things simple. So if you didn't see that video, check it out. There's a link in the comment section for the playlist and you can take a look at that. So the only thing I've changed here, I've, I've changed our uh, builder to point to our inherit.kv file that we have here. So, all right, let's go ahead and start out. and. What we want is a box layout like we did in the last video. And let's just start out by setting our orientation to, let's say vertical up and down, right? And then we wanna give this a size of root.width and root.height. So all of our widgets expand to the entire size of our app. And while we're at it, let's give this a padding of like 10 and a spacing of 10. We looked at these in the last couple of videos to put some padding around each little widget and some spacing between each one, just so it's easier to kind of read all this stuff. Now, what do we want in our thing here? Well, we definitely want a couple of buttons. So let's start out with that. And I don't know, this will say submit. And let's copy this. And this one will say clear, right? And we probably want some labels and some text inputs. So let's go label. And this will have text of, let's say name. And then we also want a text input box so that we can uh, type stuff in. And this will be multi line equals false. We looked at these several videos ago. Okay, so say we want a few of these or maybe at least two. So let's go name and favorite pizza. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It's just a very basic app here. So let's save this, make sure we've saved this, and let's go ahead and run this guy. So let's go python inherit.py. And when we do, we get this very basic app. You notice the text is pretty tiny. The buttons are the same color of gray. The text in here is tiny. The colors of our text input fields are the same and everything's just very bland. So, okay, that's fine. Now, what if we wanted to come through here and we've got several buttons here. We've got two buttons. You know, your app may have 50 buttons, like who knows? And instead of designating the color or the font size for each of these buttons, like I said, we can create a little thing that inherits for all the buttons or for all the text input, input boxes or for all the labels or for all anything. So that's what we're gonna do now. So what we can do is outside of our my layout thing here, right? We, we can create another sort of a widget thing here and designate, for instance, buttons. Say we've got buttons here. We can now put some properties and some things inside of this and they will now apply to every button that we have throughout the rest of our KV design file, right? So for instance, if we wanted to go font underscore size and set that equal to 32, we could do it one time and now all of our buttons in here will have font size of 32. So if we save this and run it, just to make sure that worked, we see both of them now have font size of 32. 
Very, very cool. So we could do the same thing with color if we want. So we can go background underscore normal, set that equal to nothing. Remember the buttons have a gray tint to them or hue or whatever tint, I guess. And to remove that gray tint, we put the background to normal. And now we can set the background underscore color to anything we want. So let's go, uh, I don't know, let's make this blue. 0011. If you didn't see the video on colors, check the playlist in the comment section below. There's a video on colors. So save this, run it. We should now have blue buttons. And we do. So very cool. So it's just that easy. And you can do that with any of these widgets. So for instance, what else do we have here? We have text input boxes, right? We could change those if we wanted by just doing the same thing, creating another one of these. And Let's set the background color of this to what? Let's go, um, what's a good gray color? Like 150 divided by 255. It's probably a good dark gray color. Okay, so save this and run it. And now our text input boxes are sort of dark gray, or silver or whatever color you want that. Very cool. And again, we could do the same thing with our labels here. We can come down here to label and set, I don't know, font underscore size to say 32, save this and run it. I have no idea what this is going to do, but yes, you do. Changes the labels to 32. Uh, one kind of interesting thing to keep in mind, notice our button text. If we head back over here and come up to our button and let's get rid of this I'll comment this out or even just take it out completely now our buttons should be back to normal size small text but if we save this and run it and you have to be careful of this our buttons are still big why is that well because the label here we designated as font size 32 so that font size 32 is getting picked up by the button text here as well so keep that in mind. So this is really useful, but it's even more useful because I'll put this back for now, because we can override any of these things in a specific label. So say most of your buttons you want to have blue, but the last one you want to have red. Well, you can just still, you can still designate that. Uh, let's go background underscore color. And it's going to be 1001. I think that's red, right? So if we save this and run it, our clear button is now red, even though up here we're saying, hey, make all the buttons blue, right? We can override that in a specific widget instead of any one of these things that we might have in this file. So very, very useful. If you want to tweak a specific thing, you still can. Uh, but if you want like a default for most things, you can designate that up here. It's just super, super useful and very cool. All right, it is Friday here in Vegas. Very excited about the weekend. Not sure I have any plans. Let's see, yeah, I do have plans, but I'm not quite sure what they are, but I've been told I have plans. <laughs> so that's how that works. Let me know what you guys are up to this weekend in the comment section below and uh, have a good weekend. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 on membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.